In a previous video, we discussed the purpose of valuations in quantity surveying and how they serve the interim payment process during the life cycle of a project. In this video, we're going to delve a little deeper into some of the practical steps on how valuations are carried out. Before we begin, if you enjoy watching these videos, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. It really helps us to provide valuable content to a wider audience. This video has been made using information provided by RICS in the Interim Valuations and Payments first edition, August 2015, a link to which we've left in the description of this video. The RICS states the following on the purpose of valuations. The purpose of interim valuations is to provide advice to the certifier on a construction project for the issue of interim certificates and payment notices. The certifier will be the contract administrator, employer's agent, project manager or the employer, depending on the contract conditions being used. This video is tailored towards a PQS utilising a JCT contract. However, the below steps should be adhered to where possible to the contract being used. There are six stages to prepare an interim valuation. These include stage one, planning, stage two, pre-valuation, stage three, valuation, stage four, valuation documents, stage five, issue valuation, and stage six, post-valuation. Let's start by looking into stage one, planning. This is carried out prior to the contract commencement and includes the following. Understanding the contract requirements, reviewing the pricing documentation, and liaison with the contractor, consultant, and clerk of works. During this stage, it's important to understand how and when valuations are carried out in line with the payment process. This means that there needs to be an agreement, if not stated in the contract, of the schedule of payment dates with the employer. There needs to be an understanding of how the valuation needs to be built up and under what various headings. For example, is there a works breakdown structure that needs to be adhered to? The contract documents will need to be reviewed at this stage. There may be factors like retention which need to be considered. Ultimately, this stage needs to lay the foundation for the interim valuation process. Stage 2. Pre-valuation. This is where the employer will receive the contractor's interim application and carry out an initial desk check on the application provided. The employer's quantity surveyor will need to obtain confirmation from the contract administrator that all works are in accordance with the contract. Stage 3. Valuation. This is where the employer's quantity surveyor will need to meet with the contractor's quantity surveyor on site and inspect the works that have been carried out. They would need to assess the work carried out through visual inspection and quantify the materials on slash off site. From here, they would calculate the sums required for the gross valuation and see how this ties up with the contractor's application for payment. They would then carry out adjustments and provide reasons for the adjustments. The valuation is then agreed with the contractor's quantity surveyor. Stage 4. Valuation Documents This is where the employer's quantity surveyor will carry out a final desk check on the valuation and performs arithmetical checks on the valuation. Any errors are then notified to the contractor. Once the employer's QS is content with the valuation, they will prepare the valuation form along with any statement of retention values and prepare the valuation issue letter for the certifier and contractor. Step 5. Issue Valuation In this stage, the valuation documentation is reviewed, signed and issued. This is assembled with any other relevant valuation documents. The documents need to be in the correct order, i.e. covering letter, valuation form, contractor's application for payment, together with any schedule of adjustments and narrative. The documents will then need to be given to an independent person to review for any last minute adjustments to be made. The valuation form is then signed and issued to the contractor. Stage 6. Post valuation. Once the valuation has been issued, a payment notice will need to be provided to the contractor. The amount on the payment notice will need to be verified with the valuation assessment. Once payment has been made, the amount will need to be verified against the payment notice and a record should be kept of the amount paid to the contractor. All valuation calculations and narrative must be filed for later reference. Keeping records is vital and will be especially important should the contractor challenge any of the payments through an adjudication. In the next video, we'll explore the interim payment process. However, in the meantime, why not check out some of our other playlists? We have the NEC playlist, 
the JCT playlist, the FIDIC playlist, the RICS playlist, the Method and Measurement playlist, and finally, Quantity Surveying Principles playlist. Matrone, a commercial hub to your business.